one of the poorer Philadelphia neighborhoods lived Joe Moscone. Below his living quarters was his place of business, the year 1923. Whenever Joe was out, his son Willie practiced on the pocket billiards table instead of on the violin. The cues and balls were all locked up, but that didn't stop little Willie. While other boys were playing marbles and baseball, this kid worked out with a sawed-off broomstick and a few Irish potatoes. And for a six-year-old, he wasn't bad. One day, while Willie was in the midst of sacred practice, the youngster had an accident. Uh-oh. And then the next moment, of course, it was Papa Moscone. Though Willie was doing a good job of hiding that rip he'd made, Pop was boiling. Time after time, he told that kid to keep away from the tables. But when he saw this, well, what could he do? With that kind of ambition to master the game, how could he stop the little guy? And then... Yow! That did it. No more pocket billiards for Willie. Ever. And the punishment was not entirely verbal. A few days later, Tony, a regular Moscone customer, was brushing up on his game. He was a good guy, but he didn't like kibitzes. Especially small kibitzes. Yep, to an expert like Tony, this didn't sit so well. But then, if his pop caught him in here again, Willie wouldn't sit so well either. Small Fry was definitely on a big fat spot. Imagine this bambino trying to show Tony what to do. Little did he know it, but here was the shot that would either send him back to his violin practice or start him on his way to become a world famous cumin. Mamma mia! He made it! So Tony got excited. And when Tony got excited, well, that was it. You just had to listen. Even the scolding Moscone had to pause under his attack. It wasn't long before Papa Joe's window ballyhooed the boy wonder. The clever kid's cumanship brought bucks to a family that could well use them. Soon, Willie began to play in local tournaments. Hour after hour, he practiced, practiced, practiced. He loved the game. It was his life. As he grew older, his achievements were reported in sports sections more and more often. He seldom lost. His many amazing victories in other cities over men of much greater experience spread his fame to all parts of the country. Handsome Willie Moscone became the swooner type. Here, cocky and confident, he was playing against the great Charles Seaback. Contrary to appearances, this was a most vital tournament in Willie's career. As feminine hearts fluttered, Moscone felt sure of victory. Seaback needed 117 points to win. Willie needed only 26. A miss caused by careless grandstanding gave Seaback his chance, and Moscone lost a mighty important tournament. But Willie kept trying for the big time, and finally, one day, got a crack at the world's championship and lost. Moscone had learned his lessons the hard way, yet he couldn't cop the crown. For six years, he competed in world championship contests. But for one reason or another, hard luck hounded him every time, just when it looked like he had the title in his grasp. In 1941 came another bid to play for the championship. But after his many flops, Willie was ready to quit and look for a job. After all, he was a married man now, and a baby was on the way. Should he give it just one more try? Heads yes, tails no. Yes, this was it. The championship, or the want ads for Willie. After many, many hours of grueling competition, Willie Moscone had battled his way to the finals. He had hit his stride. Playing as he had never played before, he was pitted against the world champion and three-time winner of the title, Andrew Ponzi. Here was one of the real greats of his day, the craftiest player in the game.
Moscone's hard luck had left him. He was sinking them right-handed and sinking them left-handed. The fans knew it was Willie's day and that he never felt more confident in his life. And Willie kept going. His shots were clean and sure. He piled up points. And finally missed with a score. Moscone, 85. Ponzi, nothing. And then Willie read the big news. So did the old gal behind him. What a time to get a message like this. And Willie only 40 points away from the world's championship. No wonder the gossip spread like an old girdle. And the contender for the title? Well, gosh, that baby was three weeks early. In the mind of this first-time prospective papa, anything could happen. Yep, and he began seeing things. That eight ball looked three times as big as the pocket. So, he missed. Ouch, and how? A scratch. In a case like this, it can happen to the best. With the passing of silent, tense minutes, the great Ponzi had rallied. Once again, Willie had been close to the championship, but as in preceding years, it looked like close wasn't good enough. Finally, as the nerve-wracking contest drew to a close, Moscone was one point behind Ponzi. And the champ needed only one point to win and put Willie Moscone out of the game forever. Here, once again, was a shot that could decide Willie's future. What? The ball didn't go into the pocket. A miss. And now, an easy shot to tie the score. That was it. But he'd sewn himself up. The next shot was a mighty tough one. Here, Willie would have to make this ball hit this ball. But that ball was in his way. Yep, it looked like Andrew Ponzi had Moscone in the bag. Willie would try it this way, hitting five cushions. In order to reach the object ball and hitting that ball just right, to put it into this pocket. One stroke of the cue could make Willie Moscone the world champion. Under pressure? Who wouldn't be? What with becoming a papa any minute, plus a five cushion shot that could make his lifelong dream come true? Why, what's this? Oh no, he wasn't nervous. Well, good news, yep. In fact, for Willie Moscone, it was the best possible news that could come to him at this particular moment. It's A, B, O, Y. <laughs> so, that was one hurdle. And now, that shot. One, two, three, four, five cushions, and that's it. After a long uphill battle, Willie Moscone won the world's championship, a feat he was to repeat many times in years to come. Goodbye now.